Welcome to Quilt Cam, everybody. I'm Bonnie Hunter from the basement of Quiltville in Wahlberg. I can't even remember where I live. Beautiful Wahlberg, North Carolina. We are a suburb of Winston-Salem, and uh, the weather has been absolutely beautiful um, the last couple of days here. But I have spent today in my basement because I woke up this morning feeling rather punky and decided it was not a good day to go out and get um, some hiking steps on my Fitbit. Instead, I have been cutting up scraps like crazy. I have tackled scraps both light and dark and cut them into little block kits for these little nine patch variation blocks that I'm doing. This was a block that I featured in Quiltmaker Magazine in 2010. It's called Carolina Chain and you can find the block pattern directions in that magazine. Um, I am unable to give you complete directions at this time. That may be coming at a future point, but if I were to tell you that this block came from two inch strips and that four of these blocks together gives you a nine inch finished block. Would you be able to figure that out? I hope so. I hope this is something that you would like to sew also. Isn't this just cute? I think it's so cute. I love the positive negative effect and how it's going to chain through the quilt. It's just a very easy project. No triangles, no points to match. Easy pressing, easy stitching. And when I am cutting at my table, this is what I like to like to do. If I turn this too much, it's going to slide right off the cookie sheet here. Cookie sheets are awesome. Um, I get them at Sam's Club. They stack. They're heavy duty. If I ever needed to use it in the kitchen, I suppose that I could. But it just makes a very easy carry tray from cutting table to sewing machine table because it's got this nice lip on it. And there's enough surface here that I can really completely um, fill this up with almost a quilt's worth of block pieces. I'm going to set this down right next to me. What I'm doing tonight, and I better make sure I have this on extra loud, extra fast. What are we on? Oh yeah, good, we're on vibrate. Is um, I'm trying to keep the piecing as continuous as possible. And in order to do that, I find myself sewing on more than one block at once. And I will go as far as I can on block number one. When I can't go anymore, I lay out block number two and start sewing on that until I can't sew on that one anymore. Then block one comes off and I continue to work on it again. And these two blocks chase each other's tails. I know some people that will chain everything through, all 147 of them, but I tend to just work on two at a time because it allows me to build the units and I can see my progress um, quicker. This is the stack that I sewed just last night. I cut some last night and sat and sewed for just a little while and I've got quite a stack down here. Most of these have dark on the outside. Some of them will have dark on the outside. Some will have light on the outside. So dark chains and light chains make up this design. And you could do this in planned color ways. Like you could do uh, just two colors, red and white or blue and white or whatever. I am just playing dark against light. I'm not really playing um, with color at all here. I'm going to cut this little chain apart. I really love these little squeezy scissors for reaching behind here to snip um, my work off from behind the presser foot. I am always working with leaders and enders or trying to, so I am always leaving one unit underneath the machine here. So I'm always snipping from behind. It's not so easy to get back here with a big pair of dress shears. But these little squeezy scissors, no matter which way I pick them up, they're just always right there to snip with. I am pressing all of these toward the colored fabric and away from the neutrals. This one's gone as far as it can, so it looks like I need to lay out another one. When I was going through my strips, I just decided I'll, I'll cut from each bag of strips. And the only thing that I really left out was brown and black. I decided I just didn't want any brown and black in this. I wanted it to be a, a lighter, brighter quilt. And most of my neutrals are in the lighter shades, white and beige and cream, not so much to the brown paper bag, which would have given it a more um, antique look. I wanted these to be brighter. So I'm just going to lay these down here like this. And we're going to sew some. I figured out for myself that if I start sewing this part, I end up in a pickle. Because the end pieces, both of them look like matchsticks like this. This is what I call a matchstick. 
but the center section has three squares. So I start with the center section first so that I can pull that center unit off the back of the chain and sew the second square on or the third the third square on and keep the block in motion. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm starting with the center section. I'm going to run that through. I'm sewing today on a 1948 Singer 201. Now I'm going to sew both match sticks. She's just a really quiet machine. Remember, I'm going as far as I can on this block. And then I'll pull the other one off. So, okay, so I've gone as far as that one can come. Now I can pull. Here's the center section for the previous block that I set aside here. And I'm going to keep that set aside. And I'm going to pull off. This was that center section. Pressing these to the pink. And I'm just finger pressing tonight. I'm not going to give it an iron press until the whole block is pieced because that's way too much ironing. Now I'm going to run this one through. After I've run this one through, all three pieces will be, um, the rows will be complete for all three. They're out of order, but they're all complete. And they'll stay behind the presser foot because I can't go any further on that block. Once I can't go any further, I'll go back to this one. And this is how we keep the piecing continuous. My object is never to have to remove something without something else underneath the presser foot. All right, we're just going to put these right sides together. And no, on these, I do not pin. This is a straight nested seam. The seams are opposing each other, so they're going in opposite directions. And I can feel those seams nest, and I don't pin. But that's OK if you do. I match my seams that, that, that need to nest, and then I match my beginning and my ending. And anything that has to ease happens in between those two points. OK, so now I can't go any further on this one, so the other block comes off. And this time, I can snip this into rows. I just love these little thread th spring thread snips are just great. Pressing these towards the colored fabric, not the neutral. And then we're going to put these together. Once this goes through, that's as far as I can go on this block. I'll remove this part from back here and add its third row on. And then that's as, then I'll be able to add this one, but then I got to lay out another block. So we just keep it going. I love this when I'm at retreat. If I can show up at retreat with all of this stuff already cut out and all ready to go, and I can just sit at my machine and sew, I could possibly get this entire top done in a retreat weekend. I think the pressing and the cutting takes a lot of time. So if I want the most of my retreat, I'm going to do as much homework as I can so that I don't just show up with a basket full of fat quarters that need to be pressed and then cut and then finally maybe get some sewing time in. Okay, so that's as far as I can go on that one. So I'm going to snip this one off from behind, bring it forward. And I know these are both pink, but they are, it's, it's two different, whoops, ah, oh, two different prints. So I can tell which one goes to which one. This batch had a lot of pink in it because that was the, the bag that I was um, cutting from. All right, so here's one. I can hear my phone vibrating. The hotline's busy tonight in Quiltville. Uh, I have to make an apology. If you have tried to order a book in the past week, something happened with my PayPal account while I was in Illinois last week, and I had to change the password and some other information without realizing that if I did that, it affects my shopping cart on my website. So no orders had come in, and I'm like, well, wait a minute. Where's, there's no orders coming in. Not the entire world can be on vacation. And I finally got some emails that said, I've been trying to order for days. I can't get past a certain part on your shopping cart. And oh, the light bulb finally went on. I changed the information. I need to go back into the website and update that. And as soon as we did, it started working again. So if you tried to place a book order and nothing was going through, give it another shot. OK, so now both blocks are behind the presser foot, and they're both done. But I'm going to leave one there. I'm just going to snip this one and bring it forward. Here's this one. Very, very simple. You can see the center section here is three squares. Here's a square and a brick and a square and a brick. It's almost like a nine patch. 
but easier. We're just going to stack these on the pile. Let's see who's tuning in with us tonight. I'm still loving my Samsung Galaxy, by the way. Okay. The email is, wow, we got 23 already. So here's one from Simone who says, thanks for quilt cam, hand piecing Lucy Boston patchwork of the crosses at the moment. Going to N-O-T-Y-Q retreat tomorrow evening. I wish that I was, <laughs> I wish I was psychic and knew what all the abbreviations are, but it's, I don't, so it's just N-O-T-Y-Q, and that's Simone in Australia who's going on retreat. This is absolutely beautiful. Have you guys seen the patchwork of the crosses blocks? They are just Stunning. It's an elongated hexagon, and you can fussy cut the different parts, and they, they come together. Um, the book is by Linda France, and she's the gal that does ink lingo. You can choose to English paper piece yours around a foundation paper, or you can print the shapes directly onto your fabric and have the stitching lines drawn so you don't need to have paper. But check that out on Linda's um, site. It's Patchwork of the Crosses, Lucy Boston. Thank you, Simone. So glad you tuned in with us tonight. This is from Kimmy who says, I don't believe I just opened up my blog feed and there you are, quilt cam time. So hi, Kimmy. How are you tonight? She says, um, usually I have to watch via YouTube, but not today. So hello, Bonnie, from Kim in Adelaide. Australia where it's mid-morning and I'm going to stop all of my chores and sew along. So Kim's playing hooky with us tonight. Glad Australia's on board. Beth. Beth says, after working on the long arm all day, I am sitting and prepping pieces for hand applique. In two weeks, my youngest will be going off to college. Oh my, the baby is going off to college. I cannot take my sewing machine on this trip. So hand applique, Cross stitch and knitting will have to do. Oh, and two classes at AQS Grand Rapids to celebrate an empty nest. So three cheers for Beth, who's got an empty nest right around the corner. Let's see, men's ties. Here's the subject line. Men's ties from, it says, Suzanne in New York. It says, I feel like you this week. Drove from Long Island to Charlotte, North Carolina for the AQS quilt show by myself. So she's just down the road at the AQS show. I'm about 90 miles outside of Charlotte. She says, um, 11 hours and 40 minutes. Leaving Friday to drive to Tampa, Florida to visit my aunt, and we will be sewing for three weeks. A great quilt retreat for me. So I'm preparing my men's ties that I will be working with. I'm using the phone book pages. Oh, and as I was driving south on I-77, as I passed by the Winston-Salem exit, I was waving and saying hi to you, Bonnie. Have a wonderful trip and enjoy. Have a wonderful time in Charlotte. If I wasn't leaving on Friday, and if I didn't feel like I almost have no voice, um, I would head down to the quilt show tomorrow. But tomorrow's my busy day. I've had my weekend. Uh, Monday and Tuesday was my weekend. Today I worked around here. Tomorrow I pack for the trip. Um, have a wonderful time at the show. Here's one in the, uh, nope, that's promotions. Smart guest book says, I love this guest book app. The email comes in and then gives you a link and you have to go to the guest book, but we can catch more than one this way. It says, I'm joining you from Malala, South Australia today. I'm working on my block of the months as I have fallen behind. It is great to sew with you live. I don't get to join you live very often due to time difference. It is late morning here. You know, I get a lot of um, complaints and whining from those on the European continent. Before we had the cabin, I was able to do quilt cam on a Sunday afternoon, 2 p.m., which would catch them Sunday evening, their time. But since we've had the cabin, we've been spending weekends up there and uh, right now we've got a, a flooring project going in, new uh, laminate floors going on in the basement, and then the driveway's got new gravel, and there's just a ton of work, and there have been no weekends at home, and I can't do quilt cam from up there. Um, the, t the internet comes through the phone line, and it's just, it just can't handle um, the, the streaming thing, so we'll have to do something for Europe when I, when I get back. And she also says... Um, oh, that was that. That was it for her. So that is that is from Cynthia, and this one is from Julie in Woodlawn, Maryland, who says, "I'm so excited because this is the first time I've been able to watch Quilt Cam live." So hello to Julie. She says, "I've been watching since last October on YouTube. 
Thanks for keeping me company while I sew, working on my first real whole quilt, a queen size disappearing nine patch. A queen size quilt for her first whole one. That's going to be uh, quite the project. Trying to decide if I should just whack and sew or should I lay them all out first. Thanks for all you do. And that's from Julie. This one's from Paula who says, sewing with you from Yakima, Washington. Really enjoy the new project. And that's what we've got from the guest book. I'm going to start another batch going through here. I had the best time going through these scraps and deciding what was going to be the light and what was going to be the dark. This was the leftover border fabric from my, my niece Emery's baby quilt. And this was just a little blue gingham. I don't know if you can see. Can you see? It's just, yeah. And at first I thought it was a blue fabric until I put it up against this one and then stood six feet away. And I realized that that blue gingham really does read as a light. So that's what I'm going to use it as. I'm going to the way I set these out, and I know you can't see on the table real well, but I'll, maybe you can a little bit. I tried to arrange the camera view. Is I put these three out in a row of three on the diagonal. Okay. And then these two go opposite the center square. And then the two rectangles, one on either side like this. <clears throat> oh, that's fun. Now, if I turn these this way, I can keep the weave all going the same direction. Do we care? I don't know. Are we going to be that OCD? I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. My voice has been really scratchy the last couple of days. Okay, so we're starting with the center row first, which I know feels weird, but the center row has one extra seam in it. So if I want all of the rows to to finish at the same time, I need to start with the center one first so it can get a second go round. All right, so we're going to run that through, and we're going to run this through. And then we're going to snip. Here's this other one. Fun. And then before we sew that third row, I'm going to sew on the remaining square on the second row. Anybody who's not a quilter will probably not understand this lingo. But there's a method to this madness. Okay, so now the first row is done, the second row is done, and now the third row is done. And I can snip off two rows, leaving the third one under the machine. It's like playing a game. Oops, I'm going to press those to the dark. Press all of these to the dark, then they'll nest block to block to block. And I can sew this on. Once I've sewn these two, that's as far as I can go and i got to lay out another block. But so far, I have not had to end my chain. As long as there's one piece left underneath the presser foot, the chain stays live. The object is to just keep going until you run out of bobbin. Okay, so that's as far as that one can go because this would have to come out to sew that other row to it. So I'm going to lay down another one here. So we lay out our three in a row on the diagonal. Put two squares either side. Oh, you guys. Do you remember this floral? I think this is one of those drop-waisted dresses from the 1980s. It's going in here. Okay, then we start with the center row. Then a matchstick. And then we double back and take that center row back off of there. This is the other block, and it's going to stay there until we can't work on this one anymore. Okay, so here's our center row. And then here's this one. Who would think that multitasking could be so fun? And those little thread snips are just awesome. 
Okay, so now we can sew these together, and then that's as far as that one can go, and I will finish this one to follow it. So we finish two blocks rapid fire here. And then these two. And the hubby's out for tennis tonight. He asked, is it last night or the night before, if I got tickets to the tennis match in Winston-Salem, would you come with me? Okay, it'll be in August. It's like the 23rd or something of August. It's outdoors. I said, is it outdoors? Is there air conditioning? No. Can I take Hexies to a tennis match, please? All right, now we put this one back through. Actually, the florals work really pretty good. This would be a very pretty quilt done in florals, all florals, just doing the positive negative thing. Okay, so now there's two complete blocks behind my machine. Oops, I can snip one off. And here's that one. Add it to the pile, and then we lay out another. So you just keep going. Are you getting it? Are you able to do it? Sometimes it takes a little bit to figure out what you're going to do. All right, we've got one message on the phone here. From my niece, Melissa, who says, Hi, Aunt Bonnie, I'm working on memory quilt for my mom using embroidered pillowcases. Hey, that's really cool. How pretty. We had a great time when they came up to visit last month. Oh, wait a minute, it's still the same month. It was just early July. It was right after 4th of July. I love that. She's going to just love that. Who did the embroidery on the pillowcase? She's got it bordered out here. Oh, that's, somebody's put a lot of work into that. So it's got, looks like a, a swan and some cattails and some other stuff in the embroidered center panel. There's a lot of vintage needlework out there, whether it was a dresser scarf or a tablecloth or pillowcases that can be um, transformed into beautiful quilts. That is just gorgeous, Melissa, and I love that floral fabric you've got in the borders. Beautiful job. Okay. I'm still clicking too many buttons. Back to the email. Up to the top, Sue Stitchin says, Missed the beginning. What machine are you using tonight? It sounds like a heavy-duty motor growling away. And this is um, Sue from Valparaiso, Indiana. This is a Singer 201, and it really is um, a nice workhorse of a machine. It's supposed to be one of the smoothest running machines that, that Singer ever did. It's got a drop-in. Class 66 bobbin. The light's in the front, so that's one of the, the things that you will notice um, about it is that the light is in the front instead of a separate attached light in the back. A 15, a class 15, will have the tension gauge here on the face plate instead of in the front here. And usually, if you, if you can't see, well, this one doesn't even say. Um, what the model is. Some of the models will have, have a badge that says this one doesn't say, but it's, it's 1948 and it weighs about 48 pounds. Okay, let's lay out another one here. I dug deep. Boy, were there some scraps that, oh my goodness. Um, let's see, Jason would have been little. So this is about, what, 1983? Peach with flowers. Peach is back. Peach is another up-and-coming, once-again, color. And I'm just going for color in this. So we're going to get this stuff in here. All right, so that's ready to sew. Karen Nicholson says, Quill Cam, greetings from San Diego. I'm creating a Hexi to go kit for a trip I'm taking to New Orleans this weekend. I wanted a hand project to keep me busy on the plane and during downtimes. This will be my first Hexi project. So I'm excited to start one. I'm going to work on Mickey Dupree's Hexi Heart Quilt Block that I downloaded from her Craftsy class, 
Peace Taxis. Love the new project and will start it when I get back from my trip. So glad to be online with you tonight. That's Karen. I know the best part. <laughs> I don't mind flying as long as there's not, you know, some huge burly football player sitting next to me with his arms taking over both armrests. I swear I've had their elbows coming halfway into my seat. And then if they get up to go to the bathroom, watch out because my arm is taking up that armrest. I'm, I will wrestle you for half of that armrest. It belongs to me. Um, but I love being on a plane knowing that cell phones turned off, can't answer emails, can't answer telephone calls, can't answer texts, don't have to figure out what to cook for dinner, don't have to let the dog in or out, and I can just um, just tune out and and stitch. And I love that. I, I try to look at that as, you know, we, we hate travel. Travel's kind of, oh, and there's so many people and you feel like cattle on the plane. But that's also my bubble zone. I may be sitting next to somebody who doesn't know me who isn't interested in what I'm doing, and that's perfectly fine with me. Um, sometimes I'll put movies on my Kindle Fire. I'll download those ahead of time so that I can watch something on the plane. If the plane is going overseas where they have their own movies, um, sometimes I'll, I'll, just, I'll just watch those. But it's just a, a great way to put yourself in your own little bubble with a perfect excuse to sew for hours and hours. So I hope you have a great time to um, New Orleans. It's a fascinating town. I hope you love it. Take lots of pictures. It's a great place for pictures. This one's from Andy. How are you, Andy? She says, so happy to be catching Quilt Cam Live. Love Wanderlust behind you. It's still behind me. It was behind me two weeks ago. It has not moved. That's because on the other side of that cutting table is all of the mess <laughs> from cutting all this stuff out last night. So glad you could join in, Andy. This is Kathy in Victoria, B.C. Who's, oh, she sent a picture. Look at this. She says she's string piecing along tonight on her 301A. Gosh, I need practice on sewing a straight seam. You know, those 301s, they go really, really fast. Then they kind of, they kind of skate. Let's see if I can get that picture a little bit bigger. That looks great, Kathy. And, of course, that, that 301A is Cadillac beige, isn't it? Wonderful. We're going to save that one. That's gorgeous. Love that machine. Linda K, permission request. She says, I'm watching Quilt Cam and remembered I need to email you and ask permission. And I'm scanning, 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 scanning. Ask by mini workshop. Yeah. You you don't even need to you don't even need to get my permission. That's just fine. All I ask is if you print anything off with my information that you also include um, my website information on anything that you hand out so that people can come look and see and see what free patterns are available and, and what you know maybe they would want to catch up on quilt camera or whatever that is. So if you use any of my information, just direct people back to it so that they can get to know me and I can get to know them too. That's all. But I hope you have a great lecture um, and, and, and get people excited about using the fabric that they already have. Okay, Mary says, I got my row by row quilt top finished and load it. I'm ready to quilt it as soon as quilt cam is over. You want me to go now? I could just go now. Um, setting up my last 12 blocks for, to, for sew for Dear Son Number 1's 15th anniversary quilt, so happy you're feeling better for hanging out with us. I just woke up headachey this morning. Maybe I didn't really sleep well, so I, I kind of opened up one eye, heard the birds out the window, saw the sun coming through the blinds, opened up one eye and felt, you know, kind of, oh, okay, I have a headache. Did not want to open the other eye because the headache may just go... <sighs> And it's just been that kind of day, but I'm I'm feeling much better now. Here's a question for Quilt Cam. This one is from Joy in Nashville, who says, "I was making a pot of tea, getting ready for Quilt Cam, and was looking at your calendar. I like the new updates. I was wondering if you're teaching at the Houston Festival, had a booth, or were just attending. Right now, um, I'm not I'm not teaching." I do not have a booth. If I'm at, at Quilt Festival, I'll either be in the Kansas City Star booth or with the, the Quilt Maker Magazine booth or both, or you may just find me wandering around the show. Right now, I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do because a few weeks, or no, sorry, a few days before Houston, I'm teaching um, in East Texas up in Mineola at Stitch in Heaven. You've probably heard of Stitch in Heaven Quilt Shop before. That's where I'm going to be teaching for a few days. And then I have a few days before festival 
but I, I wasn't sure exactly how this was going to fall with, with bef before the cruise. So this is me a couple months in advance thinking, well, shoot, I probably ought to find a hotel room. Well, shoot, am I going to rent a car in Mineola or, or whatever and drive down to Houston? Or shoot, am I going to add an extra flight on there? Or, or what am I going to do? So I have no idea. I was even thinking I could talk to the gals in Mineola. They have a retreat place. And maybe they'd let me just stay a few days and sew and, and not even bother with, with Quilt Festival, just get down to Galveston in time um, for the cruise. The hubby's coming on the cruise with me, but he can't be there early, so I'd need to arrive at the Houston airport at the time that he is flying in, which makes me think that I would just stay in Mineola, fly down there. So that's, that's under, under works. I'm afraid that I wouldn't be able to find a hotel room at this point. But if I do go to the festival, I'll let you know. If you see me wandering around, stop me and say hello. She says, my husband and I spent last weekend driving through the Smokies looking for land for a cabin. He specifically said, we can buy a cabin, but you can't turn it into Quilt Villa. <laughs> You're a bad influence in a good way. That's funny. Simone says, initials. N-O-T-Y-Q is north of the Yara Quilters, located in Diamond Creek. So they're going on retreat this weekend. Sounds a, like a lot, a lot of fun. And she also says she uses Linda Francis Ink Lingo for her um, patchwork of the crosses. So there you go. There's an endorsement there for you. April says, we're watching on an iPad in the car, just leaving from Five Guys Burgers because it's my oldest son's Jason's birthday turning 13. My oldest son is a Jason also, spelled a little different, but still a Jason. You call him Jace for short? We do. Hoping to get home and so before you're done. But all my kids have to watch and listen also in the car. <laughs> my daughter, Hailey, age eight, turning nine in August, says, hello, Bonnie, and that's from April in Minnesota. So here's to all of April's kids, all stuffed with Five Guys Burgers in the car driving home. And Marsha Reed says, during quilt camp, working on getting ready for four-day retreat next weekend, making tote bags for my granddaughter and her mother, I started with log cabin blocks and broken dishes blocks, making straps and putting all the layers together to take ready for sewing work. More projects, I think she meant strips. Oh, oh tote bags, yeah, so it would be straps. So she's making the straps for the tote bags and putting all the layers together to take ready for sewing work. More projects to get ready this week. So she's another one. She does all of her homework ahead of time so that when she is out there on her vacation, she doesn't have to waste that time just pressing and cutting. It's all kitted up and all ready to go. So you get twice as much done if you can do your homework ahead of time. She says, I enjoy quilt cam and rarely miss one. Have a great trip. And that's Marsha near Toledo. And I'm going to sew. So we got this block all laid out here. And I'm starting with the center row. The center row is the one with the three squares because it needs two seams where the others only need one. So. So, and when you work it, you'll find your own way to keep that piecing as continuous as possible. Here's that one with the florals. Add it to the pile. Snip the center one back off. So the, my spring scissors just lay here at the back of the machine, and I can just grab them and piece off the back. Leave something under the needle. You go as you can, and when you can't go any further, you lay out another block. These two go off. Now these two go together, and then that's as far as we can go on that one. I love these because there's less seams to match than a regular nine patch. Okay, we'll lay out another one. Oh, this, this must have all been from that peachy bag because this is that little paw print stuff. You probably recognize this. Early 80s. We're talking early stash here. Lay these out. 
and I love pairing them with something more modern so this is just kind of a fun neutral to pair it with it does just does not go it's not supposed to match and we'll start with the center row and that center row comes out. This one gets set aside. I've been experimenting with how the be best way is to work that presser foot on like a uh, featherweight or a 301, any of those Singer machines. Let's see if I can get this up here. It goes from behind, so I don't know if I can. Can I get it up here? Okay. So this is the presser foot. There's, it looks like there's two buttons, but this one is stationary, and then there's this one. And everybody says, oh, I have to sew barefoot to be able to put my foot on that button. You don't. You rest the center of your foot or the edge of your foot on the stationary button, and then you just rock your foot down so it's the side of your foot that's hitting this button, not your toe. And I found I've had more control depending on how much presser, pressure I put on that button. So you don't want it this way with your toe hitting the button here. You don't need to put your whole foot on the entire pedal. Put your shoe or your foot, and I, I have to sew with shoes on. I just got bad feet that way. Foot on the stationary button and then rock it down and up and rock it down. And, and it's, uh, it's working much better for me. Then any other way I tried it, it's like, well, why didn't the, the um, manual for these come with how to put your foot on the foot pedal? Because the first time I got a vintage machine and it had this one toe button thing, I couldn't figure out what I was doing. But now I just, I just kind of tilt my foot and it just goes, not a problem. Okay, and then this one. Uh, with, with plantar fasciitis and uh, other feet issues, bad arches, I, I, I am a shoe girl. If my feet hurt, I'm just not happy and I can't sew if my feet hurt. But just try that. Just put your, put your foot on that steady button and just rock your foot in like this and then twist to release. It works. Okay, so now all three rows on this one are ready. Let's go to my chair. And that's as far as that one can go. This one is now done. These will all get an iron press later. I'm just not wasting time with it right now. And we'll lay one more out. We're going for another col color. This time we're going turquoise. Kind of modern fabrics. Just like that. Turquoise. Fun. Alrighty, this thing has been buzzing off of the mark here. There's five messages in <laughs> my text messages. Okay, so okay, so um, Melissa says that the embroidered panel with the cattails and the swan was from her aunt Nellie, her mother's oldest sister. So that's really special way to um, save that. Irene says. I'm planning on going to the cruise so I can take you. Oh, that's wonderful. Oh, that's even better, Irene. Maybe I can, maybe I can come down to uh, San Antonio. Um, yeah, she'll come get me in Mineola. You got it, girlfriend. That sounds awesome because then I don't have to pay for a hotel room. I'll go so with Irene. Call me later or email me. That sounds awesome. So then she says, okay. Um, I needed a quick pattern for a quilt of valor. Actually, I need three of them to be done by August 16th. All right, you have two weeks. 
plus two days to get three quilts done. I was so excited to find the 4th of July pattern on the free patterns tab. Using the studio to cut my three and a half inch blocks, I've already got them all cut out and I'm drawing diagonal lines while I watch Quilt Camp. I will take them to retreat this weekend. Oh, you're going to retreat. Cool. The only bad part is that I have to leave behind my new quilt inspector. I see a kitty cat. Oh, my goodness. Still haven't named him, but the dogs, Riley, Murphy, and Katie, have decided he's tolerable and not lunch. <laughs> Thanks for the free pattern. That sounds great. Irene, you got a deal, sister. You got a deal. That's that's awesome. I Yes, yes, yes. And you, um, you are still planning on coming on the cruise. Yes. Awesome. Okay, we'll talk later. That sounds awesome. Um, I need a different word than awesome. I'm excited. Can you tell? Ah, oh, Connie Hendricks says. Ooh, cool. She says, gosh, her writing is so tiny. This is Connie in Northern California. I left a comment on your blog site about my placemats, but didn't see a way to attach a photo here. So she sent the photo. Here. And here's her placemats. Oh, those are great. Squares and quarter square triangles. And it looks like she's just been digging in her scraps, making placemats. Aren't those beautiful? What a great idea. You know, the, the fabric just keeps giving. It just never goes away. So I just I just keep sewing with what I got till I run out. This one is from Megan Michigan, who says, joining you while I prepare goodies for a bake sale tomorrow. I'm hoping to get a label on a quilt and gift it to a special lady tomorrow at the bake sale. That's from Meg. That sounds really nice. Juanita says, working on my Ocean Waves quilt. Have another 160 half square triangles to make. So that is the plan tonight with great company. Isn't that great? Ocean waves, lots of half square triangles, but what fun. Emily of Elizabeth says she's quilting with us tonight. She says she's free motion quilting this beauty tonight. Must get it ready before we travel back to Kazakhstan. Is that it is Kazakhstan? I guess I said that right. In a few days. It's going to slowly, it's going slowly though because our house has been under construction and the kids and I are having fun in the USA. I took Penny for a pedicure today and we even talked hubby into joining in on the pampering. So Emily Elizabeth is over in Atlanta about, what is that, about five hours drive from here where I am and she's working on, looks like some Christmas projects here. Let's see if I can biggie size that attachment here. Oh, that is beautiful. So it's a Christmas tree skirt. And that's going to travel a long ways away. That is absolutely beautiful. And your daughter is adorable. Where's that photo? Here she is. Getting her toes doodled. Isn't that sweet? I love that mommy-daughter time. Now my, my granny, I would go spend summers with my granny when I was little. And Well, from the time I was 12, I could fly on my own and go spend the summers. And she'd always say things like, I got to go have my hair doodled. Or we got to get our... Our, t our fingernails doodled or our toes doodled. So it was never just done. It's doodled. So that stays. She got her toes doodled. Okay. Let's go back to that. And Patty D says, just wanted to check in and say hi and thanks. I so appreciate all you do to promote quilting and resourcefulness. You're a great example. Thanks. Can't watch, can watch tonight, but... Can't watch tonight, but we'll catch this later. So she really did just drop in. Hi, bye, see ya. She's off and running. Mary Fraz says, Mary Fraser, working on some string pieced borders for a fall quilt I'm doing. My friend Tammy suggested I try string piecing, and I love it. Hope you had a great time in my home state of Illinois last week. Oh, I did. The weather was just, just beautiful. There was one day, the last day that I was there, the day before I left, where it got really muggy. And then storms hit. But I was at the on the top level of the hotel I was staying in. And it had kind of a pitched roof. And you could hear the rain on the roof and the thunder and the lightning. And it was just so, I love that. I love a good thunderstorm. And luckily it wasn't the kind, whoops, you know what I just did? I sewed the end first, not the center one first. So I'm going to be stuck. I am going to be stuck, and I'm going to have to do something to fix that. So what I'm going to do to keep this chain going is I'm going to cut this one off and add this to it. Dang. 
you know, anybody who says that we need to do crossword puzzles and stuff like that to keep our brains alive and to not get Alzheimer's needs to do patchwork and needs to work out leader entering because it'll it'll give you a brain cramp. Okay, so that's gonna stay under the needle. Now this can come out. Oh, I'm still gonna be in a pickle. I can add this one on. Oh nope, I think I'll be okay. I'm gonna add this one on. And then this one on, and then I can snip that off and add that one to it. Keep it continuous. Peach. It's got to go away. It'll play in there just fine. I used to worry about my fabrics looking dated, and now I don't anymore. Color is color. Okay, now I can't go any further. Extra square. Three on the diagonal. Two on either side of the center. It was fun to go through, yes, yeah, start with the center row, through the, the strips of fabric. You know, I separate my um, strips by color family, and they're all kind of rolled and then tucked into a gallon Ziploc bag so that they don't get all thready and they don't get all wrinkly. But you can unroll that bundle, and there's all your strips all stacked up. I loved finding the shorter ones and just, you know, if if I could just completely annihilate that strip, it was gone. So all the, the only ones that are really left, I started with the shortest strips first and then worked my way and tried to just use stuff up till it was gone. We had a great time in Illinois. Three days of classes and a lecture. It was long enough in one place that you really start to get to know the ladies, and it was a lot of fun. Okay, so that one is now in rows. Besides, there's a Culver's there. And yes, I went twice. I was told there's now a Culver's in Charlotte. But it's 90 miles away, so what good does that do me? Besides, I really don't want one here because it's my Midwest thing. If you can have it all the time, then the specialness is gone. Uh-oh, lost one on the floor. Okay. It's amazing what you can get done with just finger pressing. Iron press later. Okay, that's as far as that one can go. This one will press open. Turquoise, fun. All right, we've added to our stack already today since we started tonight. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and this is number eight done. These just go so fast. And anything goes. You just separate your lights from your darks. Joanne says, 
Is the project you're working on tonight for the new baby coming in your family? I missed the first part of Quilt Cam. Sorry if you already answered this question. It may be, but I kind of went overzealous with my cutting. So who knows? It may be enough for two baby quilts. It may end up being a lap quilt uh, for my sister-in-law. Who knows? But I'm just I'm just sewing to sew. The the fabric was a plenty, so I just kept cutting. We'll we'll see. I don't even know how many blocks I've cut out yet, or how many that I would need to make it a significant size. And I may make two out of this batch. Who knows? Um, the thing is, I'm the I'm the oldest of eight kids. Um, there's three from my mom's first marriage, and then five from the second. So we all have the same mom, but. The, the younger five have a have a different dad, but we all consider each other as full siblings. But they're significantly younger than me enough, I'm the oldest, that that all five of them are in their childbearing years right now. So <laughs> every time somebody just has a baby, well then somebody else gets pregnant. And and luckily I've only had it once where where two were pregnant at the same time, my uh, sister and my sister in law were both um, pregnant and due last July. So those babies came right on w within a week of each other. Um, I wish they'd slow down. I can hardly keep up, but but family is just, just awesome. So it's really neat to watch these, these new babies come. Okay. This one is from Barbara Robinson who says size of squares and rectangles. I didn't give them. Um, the directions are in Quilt Maker Magazine. Um, and this is because the, the copyright is in there, I'm not giving out the patterns. I maybe um, include the directions with this block in a future in a future project, but not right now. Some stuff I don't give sizes for. Okay, Stella says greetings from Montreal. Um, I've been in a bit of a quilting slump this summer, but today I organized my sewing room. That helps, doesn't it? Played with my fabric and cut some strings for my next string quilt. Thanks for the inspiration, and that's Judith Gale. Susan Earle says, this is my first quilt cam, so welcome to Susan. Too busy watching to sew. <laughs> You'll get tired, and pretty soon you can just listen to my voice, and, and you don't need to watch me anymore. She says, I'm wanting to make my blue heaven. I don't have scraps, but do have a stash waiting to be cut. What would be the number of blues you would recommend as a start? As many as you can. You want is, you know, cut one strip from each. Um, try not to have too many repeats of the same thing. So if you have lots of fabric, and maybe you, you've cut a strip from this piece of fabric, cut that strip in half and just cut your pieces from half a strip length. You want more variety so that it, it doesn't look like you're just playing with five fabrics, okay? So I, I often will work with short strip sets just so that I can build my variety faster. Kim Andrew says, tonight in Minnesota, getting ready for a motorcycle trip out to the Tetons. Issue is space. Want to bring a sewing project, but it must be small. Decided to work on three inch Dear Jane blocks for a swap in November. Plan to pre-cut everything, so it should hopefully all fit in a Ziploc sandwich bag. Hubby shouldn't complain about that. You're right. You know, we can stay busy. We just go smaller. You don't need um, tons of fabric for a, a successful vacation. I don't know how long you're gonna be gone. I've got 10 days. Um, in England, and my Hexi project, go with me, mm, sorry, <coughs> the dreaded dry tickle. My Hexies are three quarter inch, but it's a, like she said, it's amazing what you can fit in a small pouch. Um, thread, and people asked about scissors, I am not traveling with scissors this trip. Um, you can get out of the U.S. with scissors. It's just hard to get back in with scissors. I've watched people have um, the, the little Fisker school scissors taken in Hong Kong. doesn't matter if they were rounded or not. They say no scissors, no whatever. So on my thread cutter, there's one of those little razor blade things or you can use the dental floss thing. And we've all hashed this out before and I'm not going to waste the time to get into that. But just a, a small kit with my hexagons, my pre-cut hexagons, and I don't do squares. I do cut actual he hexagon shapes that are a little bit larger than a quarter inch all the way around from my paper. I don't want the extra bulk. That extra bulk also takes up space in my luggage, so I don't do squares. I do have them cut down. Um, and my thread and a 
you know that that's it. So um, we'll have some we'll have some fun with that. This one I'm going to scroll down a little bit. There's a lot that I am missing, so uh, I apologize. There's just a lot coming in here. This is from um, Steve, who says, "Bonnie, you're an inspiration. I'm watching you live tonight. Sewing with leaders and enders has changed my life." Thanks, thanks, thanks. And that's Steve S. in New York. So hello to Steve. It's just, Steve, you got to just work at it and think ahead enough to leave something under the needle. And if you end up at a dead end, lay out something else. We just keep it going. Linnell says, this can't be. I'm a quilter, and I need both arms. My daughter and grandkids are here from Japan visiting for a month, so we went to an amusement park. Uh-oh. Must have happened there at some point. Hope I don't have to have surgery, but going to the doctor tomorrow and find out. Send good karma, everybody. She thinks she ruptured her bicep tendon carrying around kits or something. Oh, no. Let us know how it goes. And for right now, ice, elevation, rest, and quilt cam. Okay, this one. This has a number as the, as the email address. So, uh, oh, it's Sue. She didn't leave her name. It says, so happy to be joining your quilt cam live tonight from northwestern Wisconsin. I'm machine quilting a donation quilt, hoping to finish it tonight. Thanks for the inspiration and encouragement you give to so many. I've been more productive with my quilting since connecting with you via Facebook and your blog. So we do have a, I played last night after spending all day in the calendar. And trying to update the calendar. So if you haven't been on the blog for a while, if you click, if you look at the, the links that are in the tabs at the top of the blog, um, there's a one that says calendar of events. And it's clickable. So you can click from July to August to whatever, whatever, and get more of a page view of where I'll be and what I'll be doing. On the dates where there is an event, the guild dates are in yellow. Click that link and it will open up a little window and it'll give you the guild's name. The guild's name, if they have a website, is clickable to get to their website. The contact person is listed and the classes I'm teaching will also be listed there. And it's a work in progress. I've only made it through um, 2014 and 2015 so far. I've got lots more dates and lots more information to add. But I, I'm going to wait to do any more until I get back from England, just in case I decide that I don't like this calendar. I don't want to have put five years worth of stuff on it. So we're going to let it sit there and see how it works for everybody. Okay, laying this one out. Start with the center row. Got lots of thread here. Yeah. Bring that center row forward, sew the second seam onto it. And then the third row. And then you just go as far as you can go. Snip those three rows apart, press seams. I do have pretty hefty fingernails, so pressing <laughs> with fingernails is not a problem. All right, that's as far as we go on that one. We can lay one more out. We're just cruising on these. So you can see, even with having to take time out for, for uh, messages, and, and responses, we are still getting a ton done over here. I was amazed at how many I could sew last night. And I'm not even, this is, this is how I production sew. I probably use the same floral fabric three or four times 
in this quilt and I may sell those one after another after another I think this is the third one but I just I just keep them going so it doesn't bother me that I'm sewing blocks from the same thing a few times because I know in the quilt they're going to be shifted around this is one of those fabrics is it right side up or wrong side down who knows If you can't tell which side is the right side or the wrong side when you're laying out the block, then we don't worry about it because nobody will know once it's sewn into the block. Just keep her going. I just love a good clean out project like this where you don't have to worry about a certain color theme or anything. You're just neutrals and colors. That's all. Just use it all up. The blocks are small enough that we get lots of repetition of those diagonals across the hill. I was smart today too. As I was getting ready, I have one of those fans that's on a pedestal that's kind of oscillating. I put it on top of the long arm table behind me so it's oscillating this way at me because I have just been in one killer week of major hot flashes and I turned the um, air conditioner that's in the window off because it's so noisy I didn't want that noise to uh, interfere with quilt gal. I'm staying cool as a cucumber. Sometimes I can be brilliant, sometimes not so much. But the fan feels good. Okay, that's as far as we can go on that one. And this one is added to the pile. Another peach and green. Yeah, we could sew this entire quilt on a retreat weekend. I know we could. Okay, this one is from... NJS, which is Norma, who says, here's my new pink diva. I got her at a garage sale for 20 bucks. My hubby asked why I wanted her, and I said, because I have to have a pink machine. She sews a perfect stitch and purrs like a kitten. I haven't named her yet. Any suggestions? Well, I think you just need to call her Pinky. Oh, she's beautiful. Love that styling. That's classic. Mid-century, 1950s, made in Japan, straight stitch only, beast of a machine. That is awesome. I can't quite make out. Maybe if I make it this way. Oh, it says American Home on it. I love that body style. She 20 bucks. You got a steel girlfriend. Now you have the the pink machine. Yeah, you have to call her Pinky, or or some other mid 1950s name like um. Sandra D or something like that. She's beautiful. I would have snatched her up too. She looks great. Love those curves and that chrome. Okay. Sherry says, Woohoo! Finally get to watch you live again. It's been months. As you can see from my profile picture, there's been two little ones taking up most of my time. As a grandma, they tend to take precedence over sewing right now. So not sewing tonight, just watching. I do have a general question, though, about quilt cruises. Are the machines provided, or do we have to figure a way to bring ours with us? Oh, yes, machines are provided. Um, and usually the machines um, come with the, the, the guy who's doing the machine donating his business or whatever is to provide the machines for the, for the ship. They stay. They help train us to use these machines. If you're, you run out of bobbin, 
they'll come replace the bobbin for you. So we have our own personal bobbin voice on the cruise. And if you have any trouble with the machine, like, you know, I can't find where this is or whatever, or how do I get out of here? Because usually they're kind of fancy machines. Um, they will show you how to use it. So it, it's really fun. You, It's high class all the way. Really nice quality um, machines. It's been Janome that has sponsored my last few cruises, and I, I suspect that that's what will um, be this time. And we've had all different kinds of models from the, the Hira Janome Horizons down to the little quilters edition that comes with a little uh, slide on tray. It just depends on what kind of classroom space you have and what machines they have available for us to use on a cruise. No, you don't want to have to lug your machine, so um, that's all taken care of. Just bring your thread. Okay, and this one from Margie says, hello from Oregon. When you when you do leaders and enders, how much space between each piece do you leave? Well, there's not one behind there. I usually try to put my patches right up next to each other, so there's no more than two stitches between patches. I know if you go from one piece directly to the next, sometimes pieces can start to come undone, but I try not to have long chains of just twisted thread because that can really suck something down the needle hole. Um, but I try to get it as close as possible. Also, when I am doing... Um, my machine sewing, I don't have a very large stitch. If you're having trouble with stuff coming undone, make your stitch smaller. Um, sew with about a, a, a 2.0. If you're sewing at 2.5, bring it down to a 2.0. If you're at a 2.0 and it's still coming undone, go to a 2.8. You need more stitches at the edge of your patch so that your patches don't come undone. Okay. And this says from Judy, who says, sewing along, I'm working on finishing up my split nine patch. The colors were my husband's request. It will be lovely. Can't wait to finish it. And her photo, ooh, it's red and black. That's going to be really cool. And I can tell she's sewing on her featherweight right there. But she's doing her split nine patch with reds and blacks. And it's, that's going to be really graphic. I hope you'll send me a picture when it's done, Judy. That's beautiful. Okay. My poor voice, it's really scratchy. Cindy Lewis says, camera view. Your camera angle is great. Love these squares. Thanks for quilt cam. Thank you. I moved this ca um, this cabinet into the sewing room um, the last time we did quilt cam and did it from this angle. Used, used to be I was over in, in that corner back there, but this seems to work really well. The only thing that I had to do was I had to put a board between the treadle cabinet and the end of this cabinet so that I had a place to put um, the, the laptop. But I think this is working really well and this cabinet will fit any of my class 15 machines so I can just pop the machines in and out of the cabinet and have a flush surface to sew which is the way that I prefer to sew. So thank you so much. I'm glad that the angle is good for you. Julie says, working on cleaning off my table after working on scrap crystals doing a four block quilt for a new baby but all those units still made quite a mess and then she's enjoying quilt count. Well there's always a mess. I vacuum and then within a day or so it's a mess again. Well we're going to switch color families. Looks like I must have gotten into another bag. We've got red. So we're going to put, oh <laughs> this was the big floral cabbage roses that was originally a shower curtain and it was 100% cotton fabric and we've cut it down and I've used it as quilt backings and there's just was not a whole lot left it's that peachy pinky cabbagey rosy color bye bye sew it up it's going with a recycled shirt plaid it's not the prettiest but it'll be gone it'll play just fine in there Okay, and that is, oh, no, I get this one. Trying to keep that chain as continuous as possible. And then these two come off. Let's see if I do that. See, there's just there's just uh, maybe three stitches 
in between those, but my stitches are fairly small. So if your patches are coming undone, I bet you've got a larger stitch length. Give that a try. Just make it a little bit smaller. If I had my druthers, I'd probably work this block out of inch and a half strips <laughs> and make the blocks only three inches. But I really needed to clear out these um, larger strips. This one's not as contrasty because that, that um, floral print is fairly large, but it'll be gone. It'll play just fine. All right, so there's two blocks complete. Time to lay out another one. And so we go. You want to talk about some other deep stash. That early 1980s, I think so. In fact, I think I had a maternity blouse out of this stuff. Those little rosebuds, they came in every color. These ones are gold and brown and what looks kind of a taupe color. And I'm going to put it with this burgundy. It's kind of a moda marble kind of a thing. We're going to sew until we can't sew anymore on that block. And then my voice is giving out. We'll call it a night. Now I'll be in England. I return on the 11th. Actually, I think Do we return on the? Uh, I I come home a day later because I have to because I couldn't get a connection, so I have to stay one night in New York and then come home. Um, I have quite a bit of time off in August. August is my my family time month, so we'll probably be able to do quilt cam a couple of times during August. Nope, don't sew that yet. Gotta sew this one first. But I will be deep in sewing uh, mystery quilt mode. But I will save this project as just, probably I'll save this as just a quilt cam project over the next few quilt cams and we'll see what we can get done. I think I just hear the hubby at home right now. I left the basement door open so there's noises up in the kitchen. It's either the hubby or the son. Okay, and this is my last seam because this is as far as I can go without laying out a whole nother block. So I think that's a good time to... And did I just run out of bobbin? I can't tell. I kind of puffed up a little bit. Did I, did I, did I, or did that just catch a thread? Oh, no, look at that! Out of bobbin experience. How's that for good timing? So we ran that bobbin. Um, we didn't do no pulling out of the machine and long thread tails till that entire bobbin was gone. I started sewing on that bobbin last time, and it lasted until just now. And there are no thread tails anywhere in my my work area. So that really works. I'm just going to leave this right here, and we will um, fix that up next time. I've got one empty bobbin, just a little bit of stuff wrapped around here. That was it. So no thread tail loss at all, and we will just, if I leave this here, I'll remember I was changing the bobbin. Let's just check in if, one more time and see who's checking in. If I missed your question, I'll try to get back to you via email, um, and we will get uh, back to you by email if I can. Here's a Tammy who's 
talking about an old Ken Moore. She says, I'm rather sad because my 1980 Ken Moore is starting to act up. And I wonder if you have any suggestions. I don't, other than checking Craigslist to try to find another one. Take it into your repair guy and, and see what's going on with it. It may need a new motor. Is it worth replacing the motor? If you really love this machine and it's lasted you since 1980 and it's now 2014, get a new motor. It's worth it. It's better than buying, buying a new plastic thing. So I would tell anybody whose old machine is dying, do not buy new plastic junk. If you love the old heavy workhorse machines, look around for another one. There are a lot that can that can suit you. But I would, not knowing what's going on with your machine, you just say it's acting up. My suggestion is take it in. Um, it it may just need some some fine tuning. It may need a new part. Something maybe gear may be wearing out. But until you take it in and find out what the status is, you won't be able to decide where to go from there. So that's the first thing. When I come back, I want to hear that you took it in and you know what the problem is. Don't put it off. Susan says, Quilt Cam, yay. Thank you so much for having Quilt Cam tonight. I'm cutting out fabric for Smith Mountain Morning and enjoying this time tonight with everyone. You mentioned hot flashes. I just finished with all of that stuff, but what really helped me was having a, a Chillitz cooling towel. Wet it and put it around your neck. It really helps. And she sent me the Amazon link. So, yes, I will be checking those out. Not enough time to get one here before I go to England, but I bet I will be able to have one when I get back home. Thank you for that, Susan. And this one is from, it says, Go to So, question about vintage machine. I've been searching for a 2012 machine with no luck. Is there another model you are familiar with that has drop in bobbin to the left of the needle like the 301? Um, and that's greetings from Florida from Laura. There's, you know, the 15, the 15 doesn't have a drop in bobbin. The 15 has a bobbin case that goes down under. We got dust bunnies in there. Um, there, the, I don't know, the, the drop in bobbin on other models that I've sewn with usually have the drop in either up front or to the side. Now, if you were to get a model 66, the, the class 66 machines have the drop-in bobbin on the side just like this. And I've, I've sewn on the 66 um, with much success. I love that machine. If I couldn't find a 201, that would probably be the one that I would go for. If you don't mind a slide plate in front, I prefer not a slide plate in front because I like my seam guide. And every time I had to change a bobbin, well, the seam guide has to come up or you have to have a split seam guide or something like that. Um, but the model... 404 is a nice straight stitch machine um, with a drop front class 66 bobbin and it's one of the first Singer machines that that class 400 so you have the the 401 the, the 4, 404 whatever they are thread the needle from the front instead of from the side so when you have the bobbin on the side here that means you're going to have a side threading bobbin, whether it threads from the ins the right to left or the left to right depends on the model number. But if you have a plate out front here, well that changes the orientation of how the thread comes off the bobbin, how the, the needle is able to catch that thread and you're able to have a front facing needle and thread straight through. So it just kind of depends on what you like. If you are just wanting a vintage machine that's heavy duty, lots of power, Drop in bobbin so there's no bobbin case. Try a, a class 66. That would be my, my vote for you. And there are a gazillion of them out there. In fact, you can get a 66 with red eye decals. You can get a 66 with lotus decals. You can get a 66 with um, Sphinx decal. I think Sphinx came in a class 66. All kinds. So just, just be on the lookout um, for that. The 66 will not have the light out front. If somebody has added a light to it, it'll be a mobile light back here. Well, everybody, we're going to call it quits tonight for Quilt Cam. I'm out of bobbin. I am out of voice. I am out of energy. It's been a super day. I have loved today um, being able to be home and play in the fabric has just, it's, 
that's my dream day. Um, wherever you are, if it's still early, don't stop just because I'm stopping. I'm headed to the hot tub if that's the hubby that I hear upstairs. Um, keep sewing. See if you can put in another hour. See if you can make a dent. See if you can see some progress. Keep working on those leaders and enders. And even if you don't have a separate project as leaders and enders, just keep those chains going. It's like it's like patting your head and rubbing your tummy. You just gotta practice. When I don't have a leader ender project going, this is what I'm working on. This is my box of inch and a half squares, and I'm just making four patches, lights and darks, that's all. I'm not even sure what I'm going to do with them yet, but I'm just making four patches. How many, how big of a quilt do you think I can make with, with the squares that are in this box? This is inch and a half squares that have accumulated over many years, so there's a lot of memories in that box. Until we are able to do this again, which will be sometime around oh, this, the second week of August probably, between maybe around August 15th or so. Um, keep up with the blog. I will be posting as many photos of my trip to England as I can. Um, it all depends on Wi-Fi. I won't have cell phone service there. I am going to have a text messaging program, but I won't be able to upload the, to the blog unless I am in a hotel with Wi-Fi, which shouldn't be a problem. But just in case I miss a post um, daily or whatever, if I'm down to one post a day, you'll understand I'm out of the country and there is no there is no connection. And instead, I will be taking as many photos of absolutely everything that I can so that I can share it with you when I get home. Um, thanks for joining me tonight. This is Bonnie Hunter from the basement at Quiltville. See you later, everybody. Bye-bye.